Hey everyone, welcome back to Wrath of Math. In today's video, we'll be answering the question, what is a piecewise function? A piecewise function is, quite intuitively, a function that is defined in pieces. I'm sure we're all familiar with a function like this, f of x is equal to 2x. With a function like this, we have the same rule being applied to every single input value. Every value we input will be multiplied by 2, and that is the output. So this function is going to look something like this. So this is very nice and very simple. We have the same rule for every input value in the function's domain. Piecewise functions, of course, are a bit more complicated, and here is an example of a piecewise function. We have one rule for all input values that are less than or equal to zero, and we have a different input rule for all input values that are greater than zero. So let's go ahead and sketch the graph of this function. And don't let graphing a piecewise function scare you. It's a lot like just graphing multiple functions on the same Cartesian plane. For starters, we'll graph the line 2x, but only for x is less than or equal to 0. When x equals 0, we know that 2x is also equal to 0. So we'll have a point right at the origin. Let's have x equals negative 2 for our next point. This still falls under this rule because negative 2 is less than or equal to 0. So f of negative 2 is going to be 2 times negative 2, which is negative 4. So we'll graph that point, negative 2, negative 4. That's right about here. Now I've covered up the negative sign on the 4, so let me just draw that on the other side, negative 4. So when x is less than or equal to 0, our function looks something like that. So that's one piece of the function. What about the next piece? For the next piece, when x is greater than 0, the function is equal to 3. So that's very simple. We can just draw a line here going from y equals 3 all the way off to infinity, because for every x value greater than 0, f of x is equal to 3. However, there is one complication here. We have to pay close attention to these inequalities. Our function is not equal to 3 at x equals 0, because when x equals 0, this is the rule we have to apply, which would mean that f of 0 is equal to 0. That, of course, is our point at the origin. So how can we indicate in our graph that this line does not include x equals 0? Well, the standard way to do that is to just put an empty circle at x equals 0. Let me draw that again so it's more clear that it's an empty circle. One more time. Yeah, that's all right. And then we'll draw the line just as before. This empty circle at x equals 0 tells us that 0, 3 is not actually part of this function. Because again, when x is equal to 0, the function actually evaluates to 0. So you can see there is a sort of jump right there at x equals 0 in our piecewise function which is not something we're used to seeing in non-piecewise functions. So that's what a piecewise function is, and one example on how to graph such a function. It is a function that's defined differently at different parts of its domain. It's defined in pieces. Now, before we go, let's just check out a piecewise function that we're all probably familiar with, but haven't thought about as a piecewise function. And that is the absolute value function. The absolute value of a number basically just gets rid of the negative if there is one. So the absolute value of 4 is just 4. The absolute value of negative 3, though, is positive 3. It tells us a number's distance from 0. And this is actually a piecewise function, because if we input a negative number into the absolute value, so if x is less than 0, then the absolute value flips the sign of the number that we input, so it outputs negative x. For example, when we input negative 3, since negative 3 is less than 0, the absolute value function multiplies it by negative 1 in order to flip its sign. Negative 3 multiplied by negative 1 is, of course, positive 3. 
However, if we input a number greater than or equal to zero into our absolute value function, the sign of that does not need to be changed, so it just outputs the input value. If we input a value of four, four is greater than or equal to zero, so the absolute value just spits out four. And you might be familiar with the graph of the absolute value function. Like with the last piecewise function we looked at, in the graph of the absolute value function, we see a sudden change in the appearance of the function. It goes from this line with a negative slope, y equals negative x, to this line with a positive slope, y equals positive x. And I certainly think that's pretty cool. We see the function getting closer and closer to zero, but then it hits zero, and boink, it starts going up and remains non-negative. So hopefully seeing a piecewise function you're familiar with helps a little bit. I hope this video helped you understand what piecewise functions are and maybe a bit about how to graph them, but we can go over more examples of graphing them in a later video if you'd like. Be sure to let me know in the comments if you have any questions, need anything clarified, or have any other video requests. Thank you very much for watching, I'll see you next time, and be sure to subscribe for the swankiest math lessons on the internet. And a big thanks to Valo, who, upon my request, kindly gave me permission to use his music in my math lessons. Link to his music in the description. Blind as bats, it's a sight to see. Choirs in four-part dishonor.